Hello there, Chemical Operations Manager Casey Henderson, Greens Lawn Care and Property Services, here today to talk to you about identifying and treating turf diseases. Uh, two turf diseases we're going to talk about first are snow molds. There are, uh, again, two types of snow mold, uh, gray snow mold and pink snow mold. We'll talk about gray snow mold first. It's not very common here in Indiana, but it does uh, does happen where snow has uh, accumulated and, and stuck around for a, a long extended period of time. Um, we only see this pathogen grow uh, in a very narrow range of temperatures. That's going to be between 32 and 36 degrees. So as the, the lawn is, is warming up in the spring, but it's still cold and wet, um, deep drifts of snow have stuck around on areas. Those are going to be the areas where we're going to see gray snow. Gray snow mold pathogen produces survival structures called sclerotia. Um, they're about the size of a period on a printed page. Um, what these do, uh, they infect the, the blade of grass, and you can see uh, in the pictures that, that we're going to look at here uh, the damage that they cause. Um, you're going to see uh, gray snow mold um, and pink snow mold both will grow this fuzz. Uh, these Micro, uh, microdochiums around the uh, outside of the uh, the patch of damage. Um, these can be washed over or, or stepped on and, and uh, moved around in the lawn and spread the disease. Uh, because we have that narrow window of opportunity of growth for gray snow mold between 32 and 36 degrees, we're not going to see a whole lot of damage from this. One of the ways that we uh, take care of gray snow mold damage, um, we use a penetrating fungicide, uh, such as a DMI, that is going to be uptook by the blade of grass as the, the grass becomes um, active again, comes out of dormancy, and fights the fungus from the inside. Now, we also want to put down a granular nitrogen that's going to boost the rate of growth for that, that grass, um, help it grow out of the damage, um, and repair itself naturally. Um, the second thing we're going to talk about uh, with snow molds is pink snow mold. It is much more common. Uh, we tend to see this disease between 32 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, symptoms are going to develop after the snow melts while the weather is still cold and wet. Um, it is a patch disease. So we are going to find these patches of um, brown damage or, or white fuzz and a brown damage. Um, again, this pathogen produces spores. Um, those spores are, are transferred to other areas to spread the infection. Um, we do see a lot of damage on creeping bent grass, again, on golf courses. But we can also see this in bluegrass and turf-type golf fescue. Um, with pink patch, our, our approach for treatment is going to vary. Uh, because it remains a threat all the way up through April and May, um, fungicides aren't always warranted, but are, are recommended uh, with heavy damage. Um, during the earliest part of damage, we want to use a contact fungicide that's going to kill the spores where they sit. Um, it's going to affect them directly. Once we start seeing grass come out of dormancy, then we want to switch to a penetrant fungicide uh, that's going to be uptook by the blade of grass and uh, kill the disease from the inside. The next thing we're going to talk about is gray leaf spot. It is a foliar disease that is going to affect uh, perennial ryegrass and tall fescue. Uh, because we have less perennial ryegrass here in the Midwest, it's not as commonly used um, as it has been in the past. Um, the, the threat of gray leaf spot is, is a lot less than it used to be. Um, again, we still can see this on turf type called fescue lawns. Um, it is caused by a fungal pathogen that's going to readily infect and, and kill leaf blades. These leaf infections can progress all the way down into the crown area, resulting in the death of the plant. Uh, moderate outbreaks of gray leaf spot result in clusters of thin, off-colored turf, uh, but severe outbreaks are going to result in death and decay of an extensive area and ruin an entire turf. During the spring and, and early summer, um, leaf spot disease can be confused for gray leaf spot. Um, 
if you manage a, a perennial ryegrass or tall fescue lawn, uh, obtaining an accurate diagnosis is essential because the fungicide treatments are, are much different for other leaf spot diseases than they are for gray leaf spot. The only true way to diagnose gray leaf spot uh, is through a, a microscope. We have to see these very uh, characteristic spores that uh, gray leaf spot creates um, and, and identify those and treat them. Now we're going to take a look at dollar spot. <clears throat> dollar spot again is a fungal pathogen. Uh, what happens is it, uh, it blights leaf tissues, but it's not going to affect the turf grass roots or the crown. Uh, this disease is pretty common both on uh, bluegrass and bent grass lawns. Uh, it will affect some turf type uh, fescues, uh, especially um, coarse fescue. Uh, what's going to happen is we're going to start to see these brown patches in the lawn um, and it's going to result in a, in a poor quality looking lawn. Um, dollar spot is one of the most uh, readily identifiable diseases. Its characteristics um, are little brown spots in the lawn. They're going to be about an inch in diameter. They're going to be round tan colored spots. Um, they often occur in clusters and they can cause some considerable damage um, on a golf course uh, and affect play. Um, on a lawn, the, the damage is not going to be as, um, as significant, but we are still going to see some damage. Um, this is not a lasting damage. In the early spring, uh, in the early morning hours, uh, when the dew is still fresh on the lawn, uh, dollar spot is going to produce an, an abundance of mycelia. Um, you're going to notice this as white fuzzy patches on the lawn. What you're going to see is these are going to be again at the edges of brown lesions um, in the lawn. Uh, they're going to be straw to reddish colored. Dollar spot tends to grow best at temperatures between 55 degrees and 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Again, we're going to see that after periods of heavy dew or humidity. Um, with dollar spot, there are some non-chemical options um, that can be exploited. Uh, again, those are going to be um, applying a, a dry fertilizer that's going to help grow the the lawn out um, but typically we are going to need to put down a coverage fungicide with with dollar spot to control it and keep it from spreading the uh, mycelia that we're going to see um, at the edges of the the patches can spread through mowing or, or traffic through the lawn and they can spread very readily um, they can move very quickly to other spots of the lawn Next, we're going to take a look at red thread. Uh, we can see by the picture here just why red thread gets its name. Uh, as the, the pathogen is growing and feeding on the lawn, we see these very thin uh, red needle-like strands extending from the blade of grass. These are called stomata. Uh, they can remain viable in the soil for up to two years. After, after germinating, um, these stromata are going to infect the leaf blade through their uh, stomata. Um, we're going to see this pink cottony wool-like mycelium that grows uh, in the patch of, of damage. Um, red thread does not cause a significant amount of damage. Um, it is typically a, a indicator that we have a, a, a common problem in the soil that we're going to see in the springtime, and that's low nitrogen. We see that low nitrogen because the snow's melted off, winter rains have washed all of the nutrients out of the, the top layer of soil where the grass is rooting. The grass has been feeding on its nitrogen stores all winter long. Those stores are running low. Again, the best course of action with red thread, a great coat of uh, granular fertilizer. This is going to grow out very fast. Um, and once temperatures start to warm up, we're going to see this, uh, this problem go away. Typically, the temperature range we're going to see red thread is between 60 and 75 degrees. Um, it, can grow all the way up to 85 degrees given the right conditions um, but again it's it's not as common um, the grass by then has really sped up its rate of growth and uh, is outgrowing the fungus in most cases um, we typically see it like I said in, in poor nutrition and, and slow growing areas of the lawn <laughs> next we're gonna look at brown patch Brown patch is another foliar disease that does not damage crowns or roots. Uh, moderate to severe outbreaks um, on high maintenance creeping bent grass and annual bluegrass uh, can result in 
thin and poor quality turf. Um, it's going to be predis predispositions to um, algaes and moss infestations. Um, brief periods of brown patch can uh, temporarily spoil the appearance of a lawn, uh, but they're not going to do any major significant damage. Um, we slow this, uh, this growth down with a, a selective fungicide. Um, there are some, some fungicides that are great for um, brown patch control, but they aren't going to have the same effect on other funguses. So we need to be very careful when we're, when we're choosing these. Again, we're going to couple this uh, fungicide um, with a granular fertilizer to help the grass recover. Um, some seeding may need to be done in the areas if the damage is uh, pretty extensive, but typically we're not going to see that uh, extensive damage with uh, brown patch. Next we're going to take a look at Pythium blight. Now Pythium blight is going to be a very damaging uh, fungus. It is a foliar uh, pathogen. Um, we're going to see this during the height of summer when nights are very warm, 68 to 75 degrees. Um, we're going to have long periods of dew, you know, greater than 12 to 14 hours. Um, we're going to see this uh, in lower areas uh, where soil moisture is maintained and dew begins to form early. Um, this hot, humid weather should signal alert for Pythium blight outbreaks. People should be on the lookout for this. It is a very common problem. Uh, the initial symptoms are going to start as small circular patches of collapsed, kind of water-soaked grass. Um, it's going to mat down. Um, in the early morning, again, we might see that cottony white mycelium that uh, we see with other pathogens. Now, as the infected turf dies and becomes matted, um, the circles are going to spread. And we can see those, um, you know, grow up to 14 to, to 24 inches in, in diameter. And they can be very close-knit um, and infect a large area of the lawn. We typically see Pythium blight occur in the same kind of areas year after year after year. Um, fungicides that are going to um, work really well against Pythium blight, uh, if applied as a preventative, are going to be uh, Subdue Max, uh, Propamacarb, um, that's Banol, um, and uh, Stellar. Stellar is a great one. Um, and Segway, these are all golf course. Uh, quality um, fungicides. They're, they're very expensive um, and they only control Pythium blight. They are very selective. Um, so we have to make sure we have an accurate uh, diagnosis before using these. Um, with Pythium blight, it is pretty easy to diagnose. Uh, we're going to see that on Kentucky bluegrass, um, tall fescue, and especially on creeping bent grass and annual uh, bluegrass. Now we're going to talk about rust. Um, rust is a disease that we're going to see on taller mown turf. We're going to see this commonly in the late summer, early fall um, time of year. Um, rust occurs almost exclusively on Kentucky bluegrass and perennial rye. Um, it's largely a cosmetic disease, uh, but the uh, orange spores um, can become a, a great nuisance because they are very thick on the lawn. Um, that's going to give the lawn a very uh, brownish orange, reddish cast um, that's going to cover large areas. Um, these orange spores are going to dislodge easily from the leaf surface and uh, you know they can color the, uh, the sides of your shoes and, and the, the cuff of your pants. Uh, they can even stain the fur on a, uh, a pet's feet. Um, they are going to spread pretty easily. Um, Rust can damage uh, newly seeded lawns that uh, don't have the um, capabilities to withstand it. Um, most lawns are going to recover from this very easily. Um, it does tend to happen on poorly nourished turf that's uh, growing very slowly. So if we apply uh, a, a vigorous amount of nitrogen that's going to help the, the lawn speed up its rate of growth, we're going to see the lawn push that rust fungus out. Um, we typically see rust in temperatures around 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, where we're having, you know, a little bit of uh, long-term dew on the on the lawn overnight. Um, again, that's late summer, um, early fall type weather. Uh, 
Now we're going to take a look at fairy ring. Uh, fairy ring is uh, it's caused by a, a number of soil inhabiting fungi um, that are going to affect stands of, of turf grass. Um, they're going to affect almost all um, <coughs> excuse me varieties of turf grass. And what happens with these uh, soil inhabiting fungi? Um, maybe there's uh, organic matter under the soil that is uh, breaking down and feeding these funguses, um, or they're feeding on the thatch. Um, or the, the dead roots of the, the lawn. Um, typically, we see uh, fairy ring begin as a small circle, and as that circle spreads and that fungus uh, moves, you're going to have a ring of, of damage, and the grass inside is going to recover very quickly. Um, we can also see rings of mushrooms that are going to grow around the outside of that damaged area. Um, the thing with fairy ring, it can grow very large and spread through an entire lawn, um, especially in multiple spots. Um, the best way to deal with, uh, with fairy ring um, is with a, uh, um, a fungicide like uh, ProStar or Heritage or Compass. Um, these are, uh, they're going to be very effective in suppressing it, um, but they're not really going to cure it. Um, they're really only going only to work on the surface, and because fairy ring is a subsoil uh, pathogen, they're, they're only going to affect the turf grass that's above ground. They're not going to affect the root zone or the root cause of, of the fungus. Um, there have been some experiments with um, hydro-injected fungicides into the soil that uh, have shown some results. Um, but you have to get four to sixes into, into the soil profile, um, which doesn't make it very uh, effective for turf grass uh, area. Um, with fairy ring, the damage is not typically lasting, but we will see it occur year after year in the same areas. Um, some, some experiments with uh, fumigation um, with the mushrooms uh, present have also been somewhat effective. But again, these are they're going to be very expensive, and they're going to have to be repetitive. Um, because of the, the inability to cure the root cause, we're going to see that pathogen just keep affecting the lawn time after time after time. Thanks for tuning in again and hanging with us, uh, learning about uh, fungal diseases in cool season lawns. Uh, a lot of information that we went over today. If you have any questions or if you think you have a fungus in your lawn and you want to get it checked out, feel free to reach out to us at www.greenslcps.com or give us a call here at the office, 317-748-3153. We do have a couple of options where we can reach out and do a, a turf consultation, work with you to uh, solve the issues that you've got going on, come up with a treatment plan. Um, you can always sign up for one of our Turf Care programs, our Happy Lawn program. Uh, we have three options available for that. Uh, you can check all of those out on the website. Uh, my name is Casey, and again, I thank you for hanging out with us. I uh, look forward to seeing you again in the future.